to the shop, uh, garage, uh, coming to you from Englewood, Florida. It's been a great winter down here so far. We'll be back in New York next month. And uh, uh, got back uh, from a weekend at the Florida Flywheeler Show in Fort Meade, Florida. And uh, the weather was good, had a great show, record crowd, uh, tremendously big flea market and uh, had a chance to visit with uh, some uh, guys I became acquainted with in the machine shop and I got some clips to show you on uh, how they're coming along with their line shaft set up and uh, some homemade pulleys that they made for it. Uh, this is number 10 in the series and uh, I've got a few clips from the New York shop that I didn't use last summer, uh, I didn't have room for, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you them and maybe there's something there you're interested in. So, uh, oh, one other thing. A friend of mine who lives in uh, near Lake Wales, not too far from the Flywheelers show, uh, one that was a, uh, a tool maker, and he's retired now, and uh, wanted some other things, he's kind of converting over to wood shop, and uh, so he wanted to know uh, if I was interested in his old box, and it's a, it's a beautiful original Gerstner toolbox that was standard issue in the IBM tool uh, makers apprentice program, probably uh, 62 or 63 vintage. and. Uh, I, I have never seen one unrestored in this nice of shape, so uh, I was going to put it up on eBay for him and uh, get a reasonable price for it. Uh, and unless there's somebody out there uh, that's interested in it, I'd be glad to uh, take an offer on it. Uh, it's nothing wrong with it at all. It's in perfect shape. Handles on the side here, the uh, nickel plate is peeling just a little bit on one of the handles, but it's a really nice box. So, with that, we'll roll a few videos for you. Uh, here's the pulleys finished up. The uh, taper is turned to put the crown on them. Uh, about 5 sixteenths per foot taper. Bores are finished. This one's been split. We got a clamping arrangement here. Both sides. We got the uh, set screws drilled and tapped. Came out pretty nice. This, these are the pulleys that uh, we started on last month, and they're pretty much finished up. And uh, they're split pulleys so that they will go on and off of the shaft without taking the shaft completely down. One of the boys machined them up and welded the centers in, bored them, machined the outside uh, OD, put the uh, crown in it, and then uh, made this little fixture here. This is the size of the shaft and milled it in two. Milled this exactly down to the center so that when it's lined up and everything is clamped together, you could use this surface to line up the uh, bandsaw in order to cut the thing right down through the metal. So, makes a kind of a neat way to make a pulley. This is day two on the uh, drill press table. We've got the OD machine. And we're going to fill these holes 
if we were really going to do something with this, we'd try to weld this up, cast iron rod, and remachine it. But this is just for display, so they're going to clean these holes out and fill them with Bondo or JB Weld or something, and then just take another light cut off the whole thing. Should look pretty good. And the center is machined out for the uh, bushing, which will act as a pilot for a uh, boring bar. They can use this big drill press to uh, bore cylinders and things with, demonstrate how it was done in the old days. Big old Lodge in Shipley. Truck transmission mounted on it years ago. This place actually came out of a shipyard in Miami. It was donated to the flywheelers. Very handy machine. This is a quite an old South Bend. It's in very nice shape. It hadn't been used in a long time, and it still isn't being used that much. We are using the other wave for most of this stuff and just never got the tooling straightened around for it. Here's the story. It's been kind of slow here in the line shaft end. I spent the day cleaning up this, uh, cleaning up this lathe, taking the cross slide apart, getting everything oiled up here. Needs a lot of work. We got a pretty good repair job coming up on this back gear. I think we got three teeth out of the big gear and one tooth out of the small gear. And the line shaft is... I had him on the line, but when I walked through, it disconnected. I'm going to uh, set this coupler up. We have a couple of extra tapped and drilled holes in the side of the coupler, and uh, we'll bolt a uh, an arm out there and put an indicator on it and indicate around the other shaft in order to line them up end to end perfectly. And, uh, these hangers are adjustable uh, where they're mounted with bolts and slotted to go sideways and of course they'll adjust up and down with the screws and they're all identical. So we should be able to get this shaft uh, chewed in pretty nice. Well, we got some goodies dropped off the other day from a viewer named Jay Castleberry. Lives in Virgil, New York. And uh, he was cleaning out his some of his personal stuff. He's a he's a machinist and millwright by trade. And uh, Thought I could use this stuff, which I really can. Uh, we got some hold down clamps here and uh, the blocks for them. Uh, some heavy hold down clamps, and these are really great for uh, setting up work in the boring mill. Uh, quite an assortment of swivel hold down clamps, adjustable. Some of them have got soft jaws in them. Uh, got some T-bolts, always can use them. Large T-bolts. Uh, some chucks, still have Cosmoline on them. Don't think they've ever been used. Keyless chuck. This is probably a Albright, yep. Very good quality chuck. Uh, here's another one that takes a Jacob's taper. 
And this one is probably three quarter fine. I don't know what these chucks come off of. I have one, uh, one other one, and I had a heck of a time finding an arbor for it that was three quarter. Most all of them are five eighths. Uh, it must have been a spindle, a multiple spindle mill uh, drill press of some kind. And here's a bunch of assorted thickness milling machine spacers look like maybe inch and a quarter you can always use those for setting up thanks a lot Jay we'll put these to good use here's a little jig that I made one day I thought I'd show you um, I find a lot of times uh, it's kinda difficult to drill cross drill shafting and a drill press with a V block because there's no real way to bolt the V block down conveniently and then you have to hold the other end of the shaft up if it's a long shaft and the idea is to get it right down the middle so I made this plate and I, uh, I had a pair of identical V blocks and uh, I machined a, a step, a groove here in it about a quarter of an inch deep that these V blocks fit in to real tight it's just a, a kind of a snug running fit here on this and uh, also calculated and scribed a center line down the middle of it and drilled a couple of different size center holes here so <clears throat> and then you got the hold down clamp bolts and a series of holes here so that you can uh, if, if your hole that you're going to drill is near the end of the piece you got a way to get to it so what you do is you, you put a center in your drill either a center drill or a, a center if you can make a center and a lathe and you come down <clears throat> and you tap the plate around until you're right over that scribe line or you can drop it into one of these center holes with your bolt plate bolts loose and then lock the drill press down there and then tighten the bolts now, that way you're on the center line and you're lined up perfectly so you can slide the shaft back and forth and you'll always be drilling right down through the middle I got two different uh, arrangements uh, hole patterns here this is for the small drill press and out here is for the large drill press to, to go in t-slots this little drill press doesn't have t-slots so I'm bolted up through the hole uh, slots in the bottom so <clears throat> put your piece in there now when you bring it down on your on your mark you're all lined up I think I might cross drill these nuts sometime and just put a little t-bar in here so you don't have to have it really tight but it holds it correctly This particular shaft is a hydraulic pin for a backhoe bucket and I'm uh, cross drilling some grease holes. I have it drilled and tapped in the end for grease fitting. So that's it.